There are um, quite a number of actually quite complex, I might add, uh, functional pathophysiological aspects of inflammatory bowel disease. And I know we're really talking about two diseases for the most part, Crohn's and ulcerative colitis. But if you could just highlight some of the key pathophysiological concepts that you think about that sort of guide your approach to the condition. Well, first of all, it, it is a nutritional condition. Uh, notwithstanding the fact that uh, if you go to a gastroenterologist, they will say, you know, diet doesn't have that much to do with it. It really is something that we manage medically. So the analogy I sometimes use is if uh, your toilet gets clogged and uh, you call Tony the plumber and Tony arrives and the first thing he'll say is, lady, what did you throw in the toilet? Right. <laughs> you know, uh, obvious question. Uh -huh. But a gastroenterologist might uh, not uh, delve into that and say, you know, for by hook or crook, you've developed this uh, very... Uh, devastating condition and we're going to treat it. Mm -hmm. You know, as long as you're not uh, eating broken glass shards, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you're going to, the medicines will take care of the rest. So it's, it's a nutritional condition uh, by virtue of the fact that it, it involves malabsorption. So at the very least, you can concede that patients with uh, ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease are far more likely to have profound uh, nutritional deficiencies and a wide array of nutritional deficiencies. It's not uncommon to have B12 deficiency, some of the very medicines that are used to treat it, uh, antagonize folate, for example, uh, and uh, the vast majority of patients have very low levels of fat-soluble nutrients, especially vitamin D. So from that standpoint, it's nutritional, but we also know that in functional medicine that nutrition modulates uh, immune problems and inflammatory conditions, so nutrition plays a role.